Hurricane Dorian touching down loud and clear here in Halifax. It's all underwater now. Crews are fighting a significant wildfire in northwest Alberta in the region of high level. The weather has not cooperated in any way. We're still experiencing hot, dry, windy, windy conditions. The Ottawa River is usually behind this yellow sign. I've never seen so many people help each other up. This family, the firemen, everybody. Some scenes, sounds from the people involved, from our reporters who covered some of Canada's top weather stories of 2019. You know, the polls tell us Canadians are the biggest weather fanatics in the world. We love to talk about the weather, and we do a lot. But few talk about weather more knowledgeably than my guest this morning, and that's the Environment Canada senior climatologist known everywhere in the country, and I get to spend some time with David Phillips. It's always nice to Thank see you. you. Heather, so Thank much. you for coming oh, in. I appreciate you having me aboard. You know, this is it's always an interesting time of year because we're getting end of lists. Yes. And in this case, 2019, end of decade lists. That's right. So you've given me one as well. This yes. is going to be of the top weather stories as you have seen them. How was 2019 overall in terms of busy weather events? You know, there were times where I thought nature was going to leave us alone. Uh, you know, I mean, winter froze us and, and, and uh, uh, be dumped on us. Uh, winter, I mean, summer was baked and, and maybe we were soaked at times. But it was really the transition seasons, that spring and the fall, that often are forgotten, the right. shortest, where we saw lots of weather actions, you know, in terms of major hurricanes, uh, fires, uh, flooding, uh, uh, poor harvests. Uh, so so it was those kind are the things of, uh, that kept you yeah, on your toes in the end. it was still quite busy, uh, even though it was focused more on the, on the in-between seasons. So you put together a list of your top yes. ten. I'd like to hone in on the top three, and sure. then we can talk about them in a little bit more detail. And let's do these in reverse order. Okay. Number three, you called the Snow Good Prairie Fall. Uh, so go back to the end of September. Truly. You know, snow on the prairies in the fall is something they get. I mean, it's, it's at the time of the year. But these were two major storms. Uh, one, one week after summer ended, there was this big snowstorm in southern Alberta, about, about 32 centimeters of snow, even more, up to a meter in the mountains. This wasn't snow you're going to ski on or your mm -hmm. white Christmas. But it did have a great impact because leaves were still on trees, and so it took a lot of uh, lines down, a lot mm -hmm. of power outages. But for farmers who had a difficult year anyways, this was just terrible because the harvest was late and uh, uh, the uh, stalks were just tipped down. They, could, they had to wait an extra... Uh, a couple of, uh, of weeks and then later on I mean that had that storm had brought rain to southern Manitoba and then just before Thanksgiving another major snowstorm in southern uh, uh, Manitoba and it took again power out and you know Heather it wasn't just wires down these were transmission towers yes. that were brought down yes. for Manitoba Hydro, the greatest outage in their history. And, 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 and it wasn't just for one day. My gosh, there were like 6,000 people didn't have power uh, 10 days later. So it was a major economic hit and its convenience and, uh, and no deaths, but, but clearly a disruption. Moving up one to number two, the active hurricane season yes. that we saw in the Atlantic this past year. It was. I mean, 18 tropical storms. Uh, normal be 12 so we know it was active and actually six of those touched Canada now some of them were just sort of hit and run made it a, sort of a wet weekend but there were two major ones mm -hmm. uh, hurricane uh, tropical storm Aaron of uh, just the end of August now actually it was a good news story because farmers needed the rain in uh, in the Maritimes but then of course we saw Dorian yes uh, devastating. Dorian annihilated uh, the Bahamas the most powerful uh, hurricane ever it still had a lot of fuel and and water and and uh, uh, wind to do a, to devastate uh, Nova Scotia again for the power authority there the greatest power outage they've ever seen and in terms of public infrastructure it took out more than any other storm in the past and that's a province that knows storms and, and remember the cell phone oh, infrastructure absolutely. failed as well we learned a lot about uh, our communication mechanisms in times of emergency the crane toppled over yes. in Halifax these are some Clearly. scenes PEI also affected very badly True. so that's one we remember and your number one story uh, of uh, 2019 also involves a whole lot of water. Yeah. Uh, the record-setting Ottawa River flood, we should say another record-setting Ottawa record flood because the second in t three years. Absolutely, and that is certainly what helped to make it number one. The same people being put out of their homes, mm -hmm. the same areas flooded, but this was the 
bigger and, and worse than any, unprecedented. In 120 years, this was the water levels in the Ottawa River were the highest. You know, Heather, it was almost like the perfect storm of flooding. I mean, if you couldn't have manufactured better conditions, uh, a lot of snow in the winter time, a very slow melt, you know, it was just uh, spring was more winter-like, uh, the ground was still frozen. When the rains came for spring rains, they, they couldn't soak in. Mm -hmm. And so you got too much uh, water from melt, from rain, all at once, and, uh, and you saw the incredible damage. The soldiers had to come out, uh, volunteers had to bail and bag and build uh, uh, walls to keep mm -hmm. the water out and do mm -hmm. pumping. 6,000 homes were were touched by this. Uh, it was a big economic hit, but a lot of inconvenience. And I think the kind of good news is that the governments are beginning to think, well, you know, maybe we need to change policy. Yes. If we're doing this too much, uh, yes. uh, bailing people out. So let's let's think about a different Where way of Where people live, it. exactly. So yes. we talked about flood of the century, and you're suggesting that now we need to use these terms of reference as in flood of the millennium, potentially. Yes. As things become as you, as you just said, use the word unprecedented, become more extreme. Those are the top three of this year. Situate them. What have you watched? You've been experienced in this a long time. Long time. The trend of the last decade. What are you seeing trending wise? Well, in certainly Northern easy Acts? from a temperature point of view. This was the warmest decade in Canadian history, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been warming since the 1970s. You know, Heather, we're just not the Great White North is still great, but it's not as white and as and as as cold as it once was. And we're seeing the implications from from this. Now, none of these storms were related to climate change. Were mm -hmm. caused by climate change. Mm -hmm. But they were made worse by climate change. So Every you believe that we are seeing the effects of I do. climate change in what you're observing? And it's not just one observing. factor that causes weather, but it's a multitude of factors. And so coming out of our tailpipes and smokestacks, that extra energy, what we're doing to the landscape, where we live, and uh, and our possessions are all kind of making these storms a stormier. Uh, they're the same storms that our grandparents had to deal with, but they're just are lasting longer. They're more intense, more magnitude to them. And so we we are seeing. It's not something that occurs on the other side of the world. It's occurring in our backyards. We're seeing it right mm -hmm. here and I think the top 10 is sort of an example of the kinds of, of challenge that we're going to face even more so in the future.